looks like Darth Vader with his gun and his radar and his flashing blue light. He drives a government squad car full of all kinds of hardware to handle the angry mob. And with his badge on his shoulder and his gun in his holster, he'll tell you he's just doing his job. Watch out for martial law. When he's out there watching after you. If he's a tool of the bankster, he's a badge wearing gangster. An agent straight from Interpool. Watch out for martial law. He's there to prove who owns the muscle and might. And shoulder cut. Cannot see your license plate of life. Because he cannot see your license plate of life. Okay. Anyway, to make a long story short, uh, when I go to court, right, mm -hmm. is it on? Mm -hmm. All right, Don't when I go to court, up. I always take all my lucky charms with me, and I was one of the fellows that served with the infamous Apache Troop, 1st Squadron, 9th Air Cavalry. Uh, we were the fellows that were in the movie Apocalypse Now, where they told you, I love the smell of napalm in the morning, and that gentleman was exactly, was exactly like that. Uh, this book is done about the, the Apache headhunters uh, by a Cobra gunship pilot by the name of Jerome Boyle, who we used to call uh, Dirty Harry because he looked just like uh, Dirty Harry. Make my day. He used to have that uh, painted on the side of his aircraft along with Pinball Wizard and a few other things. Uh, this is a phenomenal book about a story of... Uh, Serious Americans. Uh, this is a Cobra pilot, Jerry Boyle's own story. A former policeman arrived in Vietnam in March of 70. He went from being a FNG, which I can't tell you what that is in a church, but it's bad, to a combat vet in just two months. Whether rescuing down crews, flying fiery combat missions during the invasion of Cambodia, or being shot down himself, Boyle saw war quickly turn from a scary game of bullets, rockets, and grenades to a terrifying race against death, where just split seconds could turn a scene of breathtaking beauty into one of stark, absolute terror. He witnessed men risk their lives daily to save others, and he heard the dreaded call, taking fire, taking fire. There were too often a fellow pilot's very last words before his chopper became an inferno. Boyle learned real fast that there weren't a lot of going-home parties for Apache troops pilots. And when you, you listen to some of the stuff, this is a Cobra pilot's life and death experiences, in Vietnam's legendary Apache troop, first of the 9th Air Cavalry. This pilot was the recipient of, uh, he was a California native and former policeman of Ventura, California. Among the medals and decorations awarded to him for his service, and this was kind of typical of most of the people in this outfit. Silver Star, three distinguished flying crosses, five bronze stars, two Army Commendation Medals for Valor. He now works as a pilot who flies in support of offshore operations. He lives in Andrea. He lives in uh, Oha, California with his wife Andrea of 20 years. And to read some of the stuff about this is absolutely phenomenal. Some of the things that get involved, I'll just read you the, the, a closing part of this thing to give you an idea. The Apache troop I served in wasn't part of the Army. The Army was part of Apache troop. We were Mavericks. But the kind of team that any commander with hair on his tailpipe would want his unit to be like. If you couldn't get what you needed to accomplish the mission through normal channels, we begged, borrowed, or stole it, usually the latter, with few exceptions. I'd follow the men of Apache Troop into hell, knowing full well, sooner or later, someone from the Blues, the Whites, the Reds, the Lift Platoon, or the Mess Section would emerge from a smoking hole, dragging the dead, smoldering ass of the devil. <laughs> Now, he kind of exaggerates a little bit, but I can tell you that these men were phenomenal, phenomenal fighters, and it was my great privilege to serve with them. And when I go to court, I take all of my battle stuff, my, my ranger stuff, my first air cab. This is from the Apache Troop logo. There's my flight wings, the actual ones I wore. This is the first of the ninth logo that was put on the nose of all the aircraft. There's the first, there's first 75th Infantry Rangers. I have my uh, duty honor country uh, coin from the uh, MacArthur group of people. It's a special group of people that defend the Constitution. It's a silver coin that's given as a serious defender group memento.
This is MacArthur and it's solid silver. Then I got all my Ranger jump stuff. I put that on there. I take my strike like lightning, sound like thunder, all my Ranger stuff that when I was in the Rangers. And I take my first air cavalry when I was in Cambodia because I was with these boys in Cambodia and locked in. My Apache troop. <clears throat> That's right off of our shoulder patches from the Apache Troop, the original one. I was with the Take My Detroit Judo Club. This is a patch they give you for running 50 miles to save your life. you got a certain time to do it in. They give you a boot lace and a pocket knife, and if you get caught, they put you in a POW camp and treat you like a prisoner. So it's like you got 12 hours to run 50 miles, or, or you go to the POW compound and they treat you like... Uh, a POW. They hung my buddy up in a pit full of poisonous snakes upside down for about a day or two. <laughs> and then this is my other patches that I wear from, from Vietnam and Special Operations Group. I flew in support of Bogrites in Cambodia. We used to deliver their supplies. I got my my Ranger belt buckle. All these are mementos of a program. My Bronze Star medal, my I have 33 of these air medals. I got five of these bronze stars. I got a distinguished flying cross, Vietnamese cross of gallantry, 33 air medals. Shot down four times, left for dead twice, walked out of Cambodia with two regiments on my tail feathers. This is the SOG Special Operations Group MAC V that we flew in support of uh, Bogrites in Cambodia and the Cambodian operation. I was one of the special air crews that was selected personally to fly the infamous marine sniper in Laos to shoot that general at 800 yards. I was one of the guys that flew him in. And we wear the wings of eagles. We support the National Rifle Association totally. You know, we ain't fooling around. We want our Constitution. We want our Second Amendment. I am a member of Vietnam Veterans. And basically when I go to court I put all my lucky charms in my pocket. It kind of drives them nuts down at the courthouse. I also have my flag. I always take my flag with me. And I have my Vietnam veterans belt buckles and my uh, De Oppresso Libre, which means the liberator of an oppression from the special forces that was given to me by the boys over there in, for helping them, you know. So all this goes in my, my pockets. I go to court, my lucky charm, I call them, and it it's a little heavy, <laughs> but I, you know, it's like, when I go, I go for memory of those fine soldiers, and some of the things, yeah, I'd rather be killing communists, that's one of the models of the paratroopers from the Charlie Company Ranger Company. Charlie Company Rangers was the boys that supported that paratroop, that, uh, that marine sniper that shot him, we, that shot that general at 800 yards. So I'm a soldier, soldier. I've been a soldier, soldier. I believe in the things that the soldiers have done. I've seen a lot of good soldiers pay the maximum price. Um, I personally held them in my arms, and I listened to their last words. Tell my mother, tell my wife, tell my family I love them. And to me, the Constitution is a very serious document, and we defend it to the death. We do not fool around when it comes to the Constitution. I've been doing it for 25 years. I am a graduate of the Project Blue Book, the special project. I also take my harmonica. I have a harmonica. Which what drives was the special uh, Project Blue Book? Blue Book is where they pulled their soldiers aside and taught you the Constitution. And I always take my harmonica and I give them hell. Give them the... Air transport story. <clears throat> yeah, well, we uh, we were flying interdiction along the Cambodian border, and we come up on the door of these uh, B model Huey. It was a smaller Huey, and it was uh, painted blue and silver. And uh, all along the side of the tail boom was white uh, powder. And uh, I informed the aircraft commander, and he told me he was hailing them on the hailing.